Hi hey there folks, uh, today we're going to learn how do we add fractions and uh, what happens if they're not all just numbers. Well, let's go back to what we already know. Uh, here we have two fractions, they already have a common denominator, so what do we do? Well, we just add the numerator straight across. What you do not do, however, is you do not add the denominators. So just add straight across the top and let the bottom be what it is. You may have to reduce, however. But then comes the troubling part. What happens if uh, the denominators are different? Well, here's one. Okay, now we're going to handle this the same way we will uh, once with variables here in just a moment. Uh, first things first, we try to find ourselves a common denominator. Now you can definitely just cross multiply as some people have suggested in the past. Uh, and yes, that will get you a common denominator. All right. So if we cross multiply, notice that I'm multiplying top and bottom by this denominator. Okay, Top and bottom by the other denominator. I'm not doing just the straight multiply diagonally. And there's a reason for that that you're going to see in just a moment. Okay, And when we do that and simplify, we get 11 over 12. However, uh, if you notice, we had to reduce there at the end. The reason we did that is because while we found a common denominator, it is not what they call the lowest common denominator. So, real simply, you ask yourself, what is the smallest number that both 4 and 6 will divide into evenly. Well, that's pretty simple. 12. So if we do 4 times 3, we can get 12. And if we do 6 times 2, we can get 12. You just have to make sure you're multiplying the top and bottom uh, by the same thing. And then when you simplify those, 3 times 3 is 9, 1 times 2 is 2, add straight across, you get 11 over 12, you don't need to simplify. That's going to become extremely important here in just a moment. Now, we're going to start using variables here. So what we're actually going to add and subtract are rational expressions today. Now, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a generic expression. Okay. 1 over 2x plus 1 over 2x. Same denominator, just like the fractions before. This time, however, uh, when I add straight across, okay, I'm going to treat everything exactly the same. 1 plus 1 is 2. No big deal. That gives me 2 over 2x, so I simplify. Notice the instructions over here on the right-hand side. Okay. Now, again, I don't touch the denominators. Okay, they stay the same until the very end when I simplify. You may not even need to simplify if you do things efficiently. So here's a problem that is significantly stepped up from the last one. Now when I look at this, I have to ask myself, what is the smallest number that 7 and 21 will both go into? Okay, that's not bad. Uh, that number is 21. So I don't even have to change the 21 part. Now, that I also have to worry about the variables. Okay, I have to worry about the x's. I have to worry about the y's. So in this case, the biggest exponent that I have is 2. So I need to make sure I have x to the second for both of them. So this is x to the first over here. So I will need to multiply this by x over x. Over here on the left, I have y to the first. Okay, but I need y to the second. So not only do I have to multiply top and bottom by 3 to get 21, I also have to include y. And there you see it. Okay, here I am getting my common denominators. Multiply top and bottom by 3y. Multiply top and bottom by x. And then I'm going to simplify those together. And then I'm going to 
make them into a single fraction. Now, I can't really add 9y and xy, but I can put them over top of the same fraction. And that's what you'll see right there. I put them over top of the same fraction. Now, for the next page, you're going to need your MVP book. And I believe this is on page 33 is what you need. All right. And so it looks like this is the first is the first box. That's page 33 in your MVP book. Now, what you see here is sort of what we just talked about, only now we have an actual expression here. And they're modeling it with something that's extremely similar in a more familiar context. So, uh, here's our given problem. Then we have to find the common factors. Well, over here, you can multiply the first by top and bottom by 7, the second top and bottom by 3. Over here, this bottom does not have an x minus 4. You're going to hear me use that phrase frequently, what does this bottom need? So the first fraction, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x minus 4. The second fraction needs an x plus 7 on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x plus 7. And that's what you see right there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply or distribute the, uh, the numerators. Okay. Now notice I'm not touching the denominators. Leave the denominators in factored form. Never multiply those out. Now, the one thing you cannot do, because otherwise it totally defeats the purpose, is some people will see this and try to cancel these, but that just takes you back to the beginning, and you've undone your work. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these over a single fraction, and I'm going to combine my like terms. So there it is over a single fraction. And then I finish up and combine like terms, and there's my final answer. So very similar to uh, things we've already done, multiplying, uh, distributing, simplifying. There we go. Now we're going to go to the next page. So on page 34, there's yet another box. And here we have 2x minus 3 plus x plus 5. The only difference between this page and the previous one is instead of a constant on top, we have two expressions. Uh, you're going to see that we handle them the exact same way. Nothing special there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the common denominator, which I found, and again ask myself, what does this one need? This bottom has an x plus 2. I'm sorry, it has an x plus 3. It needs an x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x minus 2. The one on the right, it needs an x plus 3 on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x plus 3. So I'm going to get my common denominator by multiplying just like that. Now, sometimes you'll see me put this over here on the right. Sometimes I'll put it on the left. Technically, it does not matter as long as you're multiplying it. Now, again, do not cancel. Okay, I know we just got done uh, doing multiplying and dividing. That's what that was all about. Adding and subtracting is quite the opposite. Now, just like before, I'm going to multiply those parentheses out for the numerators, not the denominators. Okay. Now, notice I did not touch the denominators. Okay. All I did was I multiplied these out. Then I combined them into a single big fraction. Notice the parentheses to separate what, was, what came from the left versus what came from the right. That's going to be very important here in just a moment. Do you necessarily have to have them for addition? No, you do not. But you must have them for subtraction. And then I'm going to combine like terms. So 
So this is, there's a lot of basic algebra involved here, at least as far as uh, distributing and multiplying uh, binomials go. Now I'm going to go to the next page. Now this is, again, it's the very next page in your book, okay? Except now you'll notice that this is subtraction, okay? A little bit different, okay? But we start off the exact same way. I ask myself, what does the bottom need? Okay, the first fraction needs an x minus 2 on the bottom. So I multiply top and bottom by x minus 2. Over here on the right, it needs an x plus 5. So I multiply top and bottom by x plus 5. And that's what you're going to see in this next box, my common denominator. Now, you're going to see me multiply these together, multiply these together, and again, it's just the numerators. Now, for this box, to save time, I've already simplified after I've multiplied those binomials together. So now I have 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 minus x squared plus x minus 20. And you'll see me, when I put these over the same fraction, you have to distribute that negative sign in. Okay, that's going to be the number one mistake uh, people make uh, after they get the common de denominator. So here it is distributed. I've just distributed in my negative sign. The first fraction is, I'm sorry, the first numerator is unchanged. And now, I just combine like terms, and we get what was printed on the page. Now, the next example is not in the MVP book, so you're going to need some paper, or go back to your other paper. So here's a more legit one uh, that we are going to see uh, more commonly in class. Now, I did take the liberty of selecting one that has a relatively simple numerator, but the denominators are not ready to go yet. So the first thing we have to do is we must factor. We have to factor those denominators down because, yes, we could sort of cross-multiply, but we would get x squared times x squared. That would give us x to the fourth. That's not going to be very nice for us to play with. So there would be lots of factoring and simplifying our answer if we did it. Could we do it? Yes. Do we want to do it? Absolutely not. So here I factor the denominators. Now again, the question to ask yourself is, what does the other denominator have that this one is missing? Now this first one over here has an x minus 3 and an x plus 2. The one on the right has an x plus 2 and another x plus 2. Well, uh, this has two x plus 2s. This only has one. It needs another. So I will multiply top and bottom over here on the left by x plus 2. For the second fraction, it already has an x plus 2. What it needs is an x minus 3. So we multiply top and bottom by x minus 3. Now, I know this will give us three expressions on the bottom. That's okay. We're not going to do anything with them. So here I am multiplying to get my common denominator. Now, the next thing to do would be to distribute in. Now, some people will distribute, you know, negative four, and that's okay. For now, I encourage you not to do that because when this is an expression, okay, you want to multiply them together first before you just.